and saying, let's just remove all of that because uh, that's the way we won't be in trouble because that topic is giving us trouble in the press. So we'll just remove all of it. It's a band-aid. Why is political polarization on the rise? I posed this question to Alistair Fairweather in a recent episode of my podcast, Solutions with David Ansara. What follows is a short extract from our longer conversation. You can watch the full episode, which is linked in the description below. Enjoy. We came out of that as a world and as a liberal democracy, came out of that um, uh, dilemma uh, and stabilized again, more or less. And I think I'm sure that the same thing will happen this time, hopefully without a world war or any serious conflict. But yeah, it's, it's, this polarization is not new per se, but there is, a, there is uh, the catalyzation of social media it does make quite a big difference. It does spread the ideas faster, good or bad. And I think uh, what many people necessarily who are outside of the, the social media bubbles don't realize is that the algorithms play a critical role in the way in which ideas are disseminated and, and distributed. And those are not neutral platforms per se. They play a role in amplifying some of these tendencies towards groupthink, towards uh, yes. gravitating to, to, the, to the ideas that resonate with you. That might be a good commercial model for those platforms. But there's yes. some pretty big negative externalities that emerge out of that. Yeah, and they, and they were very difficult to spot, to be honest. Um, they were not the things that people were really worried about at first. Uh, and... The reason that they're difficult to spot is because algorithms that appear to me neutral uh, are not. And, and so what these guys have done, um, these big tech guys, is they've made giant, in many respects, artificial intelligence machines, which say, find more attention for me. Make sure that you get more of the attention that I crave so that I can sell advertising around it. Um, and that, uh, you know, we, and what the algorithm has then done is it's found... Uh, in a very neutral way that people are more likely to return to the platform if they are angry. <clears throat> what the platforms do now is that they predispose messages that cause people to be angry to be highlighted. And human beings are, uh, human arousal, I don't mean sexual arousal, I mean um, arousal in general. Uh, anger is, very, is a very powerful mechanism. Um, and if you are already unhappy about change in the world of some kind, uh, whether you're a reactionary or a, or a progressive, um, and you feel that the world is, uh, that the world is in a state that, that um, is antagonistic uh, or antithetical to your own well-being and to the well-being of your people or, or your ideas, then you're going to latch on to people who either say things that you very much agree with, which are negative messages, or uh, attack people who are... Um, who are spreading, uh, you know, uh, the heresy against your peoples. So what you've got is, and this is in some respects worse than them setting out to make hate machine, hate magnifying machines, because they would not have done that, I think, quite as well, is that you have made uh, giant artificial intelligences, which are completely valence neutral. They don't they don't know that they're magnifying hatred for advertising dollars, but that is what they are doing. This, to a degree, could not have been predicted up front. Uh, and even if it were predicted, it would have been poo-pooed, and I'm sure it was. However, uh, what one can say is that now that it has been predicted, or it has been borne out, not predicted, now that it has been borne out by uh, the reality on the ground, that in general, the big tech guys... Um, having designed their system around that entire infrastructure and framework of, of everything. You know, that's how they make their money. That's how they drive additional users. That's how they get people to come back, et cetera, et cetera. That it's very difficult for them to disentangle that from the, uh, from the mechanisms that, that keep them running. And also they have no incentive to do that. So you have, uh, they move very slowly in terms of, um, you know, and to, but you can actually see that people, many, many people, millions, um, if not hundreds of millions, have decided that the toxicity of those platforms is, uh, uh, and all of the other negatives, privacy invasion, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, that, that they're actually leaving. So Facebook, they, they, they tend to be very secretive about how many users they actually have. Uh, it's fairly clear to anyone who's paying any attention that the number of users they have is falling quite rapidly. Um, I think they, they were forced to report in their latest numbers that the, for the first time uh, in a quarter, they did not grow. 
Um, but I think that that, uh, as is often the case with change in big systems, What's happening is that in some developing markets, they're still, they were still growing enough to offset the, 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 uh, the people abandoning their platform in, um, in more developed markets. And now the number of people that they can still recruit is, is, is growing smaller and smaller. Okay, but also the technology companies are implementing rules of conduct, community guidelines, et cetera, that are, in my view, quite prescriptive about what kinds of ideas are allowed to be spoken about uh, the, you know, seemingly this is driven by a, uh, a good intent to uh, kind of improve the, the means of communication, the way in which people exchange ideas, but actually what this, what ends up happening is it has the stultifying effect that, uh, and a chilling effect that it actually prescribes a certain speech as being verboten and, uh, and others as yes. allowed, and I, I think that that's also a negative development. So, the, were they were they to the real solution would be to somehow, and this is uh, easier said than done, would be somehow build from from the, the ground up something which didn't predispose people to towards uh, anger, uh, and find another way to make money that doesn't didn't revolve around uh, you know <laughs> encouraging this sort of anger. And as you say, what they've kind of done is put band aids on. Uh, in the very limited defense, one should never defend companies worth the better part of a trillion dollars uh, because really they, um, they, have, uh, they are entirely responsible for the outcomes in the end. But uh, those, they are kind of are fixing the wrong problem. They're like, well, um, the problem isn't people being angry. The, people, the problem is people being uh, Nazis or racists. And so what we're going to do is we're going to arbitrarily decide that these statements make someone a Nazi or a racist. I'm just kind of using those as throwaways, but you get, whether it's um, transphobic or racist or um, hateful, or, you know, they've, they've, they've sort of uh, picked from the entire, you know, from the billions of choices, they've picked a few that they've decided these, we, we are going to call these odious and then, uh, and make them, un, you know, people unable to say these things. The fact, and what that's resulted in is that, is that many people have been removed from um, those platforms, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, uh, for, so the, the, you know, the, class, the most recent examples of this are, are videos being removed from YouTube, not the most recent, but a, a, a high profile example of this is videos um, discussing ivermectin as a, uh, as a cure for uh, COVID-19. Those are sort of at, uh, relatively at whole, uh, like wholesale removed from the platforms as misinformation. Just be careful what you say here, Al, because you might get this episode removed by YouTube. <laughs> I'll try. We'll talk, call, talk about the I word. So, so uh, I have. Um, I'm not going to talk as to the if, if, if efficaciousness or otherwise of said uh, anti-worming medicine, medicine. The point is that it was an arbitrary choice, and I don't mean arbitrary in the sense of like that they hadn't thought about it or that uh, you know. It's just that when you focus uh when you try to focus your efforts at making your platform less hateful or less misinformational by pointing in you know at specific uh, at at fairly broad topics and saying let's just remove all of that because uh that's the way we won't be in trouble because that topic is giving us trouble in the press so we'll just remove all of it it's a band-aid uh and so as you say what you get is you get a kind of you get a, a combination of a stultifying uh chilling effect on speech uh which i'm with some exceptions, uh, completely against, uh, while at the same time not fixing the under underlying problem, which is the hate machine uh, the, or the misinformation. Thanks for watching. Let's hear from you, our audience. Do you think that political polarization is a threat to our society? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, if you would like to watch the full discussion with Alistair Fairweather, you can do so by clicking here. You can also subscribe to my other channel that's linked over here. My name is David Ansara. Until next time, take care. Thank you.